Morning, Africa. Good morning to everyone listening. Um, the additional, uh, I suppose, updates uh, given to the e-services and the biz portal uh, platforms, are they there to make my life easier when I'm trying to register a new company or update a membership of directorship for the company, or are they meant to make it more cumbersome? Honestly, they're, they're there to literally raise the compliance bar. Now, that doesn't necessarily make your life easier, nor does it necessarily make it more cumbersome. But from an administrative perspective, it does make it more administratively painful and not really something that, you know, the, the, the entrepreneur or, or the, 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 the guy looking at a business expansion um, really wants to have to deal with while simultaneously having to focus on actually getting the business going and, and making money. And the reason for that increased compliance burden is quite simply so that CIPC, SARS, FinServe, etc., are all aligned in terms of their reporting requirements. Why is that important, Jashun? What, 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 what was um, a defect, if you like, in the system before they had these updates that then sees these entities aligning in how uh, they're reporting? <clears throat> So you were having issues such as the fact that shares in a company, as an example, and that's you know, that's where the beneficial ownership register really comes in. But shares in the company were not being properly reported on. It would be registered on the on the CIPC portal. These are your directors. You'd have your share certificates, your share registers, etc. But it would not be fully captured, and it would not align with the SARS's records. Now, so when individuals received dividends, there would be no sort of recourse or reason as to why those dividends were received. And it was causing a lot of verification requests and things like that. And CIPC themselves actually reasoned that a lot of the additional security measures are an attempt to combat corruption, money laundering, and other corporate crimes, which have contributed to South Africa's gray listing status. So a lot of these measures you'll note, were actually implemented last year. And there was, even on SARS's side, there were a whole lot of additional compliance measures implemented, especially where there were cross-border uh, transactions involved. The same with the CIPC, where there's foreign directors involved. There's additional um, multi-factor authentication requirements. So it's items like that that actually spurred on all of these changes from the CIPC and Biz Portal changes on, on setting up a company to changing directors and the SARS changes on the approval for international transfer and a whole lot of other aspects that need to be now considered when engaging with South Africa or South Africans on business transactions. And in your opinion, is this going to help uh, address those concerns? So to an extent... It will. But remember, ultimately speaking, if someone wants to launder money, they will find a way to launder money. And in terms of corruption, I mean, you have corruption at the highest level of all states internationally. So, yes, it will combat corruption on a much lower level. But all in all, it may contribute five percent to actually combating corporate crimes wow i mean any percentage is acceptable but i wasn't expecting it to be quite that low yeah look i mean there's there's there's, there's so many ways to and you we've seen this um last year especially there were a whole lot of articles about you know that registration that's another thing so they've made that the VAT registration process a little bit more tedious and their reasoning there as well was, you know, combating money laundering, corporate crimes, etc. But at the same time, there are companies that the entire business is to sell shelf companies. And those are already VAT registered, which means you're now buying a company that's ready to go. And it's been VAT registered historically. So you don't have to go through that whole verification process. And that's that's just one example of how to get around these things. Now, the CIPC and the SARS stuff, it's a little bit different because 
they've implemented multi-factor authentication where you need to um, send an OTP that's received via mobile and via email. But before you do that, the mobile number and the email address of any directors, especially the foreign assurance stuff, have to be updated on the CIPC. But you can't do that unless you have a public officer appointed. So there's a whole lot of hoops that you actually need to jump through. And that's why it's actually recommended, you know, un unless you are doing this from the standpoint of, okay, look, it's fine. I've done it before. I know exactly what to do. Let me just knock it out quite quickly. It's actually recommended that you, that you get a professional administrator or corporate secretary or corporate governance specialist to, to run through all these processes for you so that you can actually focus on your business. Absolutely. Um, these new measures, are they going to have to be uh, put in place retrospectively or is it only for uh, whatever updates you're doing to CIPC or whatever new businesses you're starting going forward? Yeah, so something like the Beneficial Ownership Register, as an example. So that has been put in place and it must be done for all companies. Meaning, even if you had registered a company five years ago and the BO requirements ultimately kicked in last year, October, but it, it has to be done. And going forward, it is now required that any entities incorporated after the promulgation of the amended company's regulations is required that they file beneficial ownership information within 10 business days after date of incorporation. Entities incorporated before its promulgation will also have to file their BO information before effecting any further changes to either their directorship or ownership structures. All right. That's all important uh, information there, Jeffrey. Thank you very much for alerting us to it and for agreeing to chat to us this morning about it. Jeffrey Baiju is the Head of Strategic Engagement and Compliance at Tax Consulting SA, um, talking, of course, about the additional measures that you now have to adhere to uh, when you're engaging with um, CIPC, amongst other things, particularly their e-services and their biz portal platforms. All of this, of course, in an attempt to address the issues of grey listing that we need to get off as a country.